Hello, sixth grade. I am Mrs. Hampton. Before we begin, you may want to have a piece of paper in front of you to write down some answers. Welcome to another lesson in science. Today, we are going to explore the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere is the portion of Earth that consists of water in any of the forms, including lakes, oceans, glaciers, rivers, groundwater, and water vapor. Think about why water is important and how water makes life on Earth possible. Maybe the process with the given words is I read about each. Evaporation, the process by which molecules at the surface of a liquid absorb energy to change to a gas. Water constantly evaporates from the surfaces of the bodies of water. Transpiration is when water is given off through the leaves. Condensation is the process by which water vapor becomes liquid water. Droplets of water collect in the air, forming clouds. Precipitation is when all these droplets become so heavy that gravity causes them to fall back to earth as rain, snow, sleet, or hell. Did you label the processes in the correct boxes? Let's take a look. The water in the hydrosphere is mostly salt water found mostly in oceans. Only 3% of the water is fresh water. 70% of the fresh water is frozen in glaciers near the North and South Pole. Of that fresh water, a third is water underground called groundwater. A small amount of the remaining water runs off into streams and lakes called runoff. Eventually, groundwater comes to the surface. This is water found in oceans, rivers, lakes, and ponds. Rivers start out as a trickle of water that originates from a source such as runoff water, an underground stream, or melting snow or ice. Lakes are important because they hold some of the Earth's fresh water. Lakes and ponds contain mostly still water. Groundwater is the fresh water in the hydrosphere under the ground. Far more fresh water is located under the ground than in all the Earth's rivers and lakes. There are layers of rocks that hold water called aquifers. People can get water from an aquifer by digging a well. A well is a way to reach the underground water. Today, wells are created with drilling equipment and then using mechanical pumps to retrieve the water. To review, the water cycle is a continuous process in which water moves through the environment. The sun is the source of energy that drives the water cycle. Some of this water becomes groundwater. Water gets trapped in the layers of rock and it is called an aquifer. People can dig wells and use this water. However, what would happen to wells if it doesn't rain for a long time? That's right, the water could dry up. Areas with lakes and rivers can be some of the first to see the effects of low rainfall. When lakes are low, we should limit water use. We are going to watch a review video on some of the concepts from this lesson. Answer the questions at the end on any piece of paper. Remember, stay safe, 
stay home, and stay healthy. Did you know that the water in your bath could contain the same water that a dinosaur drank? We know. This sounds gross. But remember, all of the water molecules on our planet have existed in various forms in a constant amount throughout Earth's history. And all of this water is constantly being recycled through the water cycle. So the water that the dinosaur took a drink from ended up back in the atmosphere and has been cycling through it for millions of years. All water that ends up in our atmosphere gets there through evaporation. Evaporation is the process where the energy from the sun heats up surface water, or soil, resulting in these molecules turning into gas. This gas, or water vapor, then rises into the atmosphere. As it gets higher in the atmosphere, the temperature gets colder. With the colder temperatures, the water vapor is turned into liquid water, and then these droplets get bigger and heavier through the process of condensation. When the droplets get too large and heavy, gravity pulls them back down in the form of precipitation. This water and cycling of water is what makes the hydrosphere on Earth. Without it, our planet would be unrecognizable and unlivable. Luckily, we have plenty of it. 3% of the water on the Earth is fresh water, and two-thirds is held up in glacial ice. The rest of the water on Earth is salt water, which makes up our oceans and seas. Does that glacial ice get cycled through our environment? How? <laughs>